Hello and welcome to today's European SharePoint and Office 365 Community Webinar. My name is Shane and I am delighted to be joined by Beyond Hess, who will be talking to you about breaking the limits of SharePoint, intuitively create workflows and web applications. Remember to join in the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter. Our, hand, our Twitter handle is at European SP and our hashtag is ESPC16. After the webinar, we will have a questions and answers session. Type any questions you have for beyond in the questions window. Some questions will be selected and answered at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and you will be notified by email when it is available. And now, I'm going to pass you over to our webinar presenter, Beyond Hess. Hello, Beyond. Hi, thank you, Shane, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I also would like to welcome you to this presentation. Um, let me quickly prepare my presentation. So, okay. Um, First, I would like to introduce the presenters. So, uh, my name, as you have already heard, is Bernd Hesse. I'm the responsible product manager for our collaboration and workflow products here at uh, Group Business Software, or abbreviated GBS. And uh, with me here is uh, Krasimir Tanasov. He's business line manager for Microsoft Development. At the beginning, I would like to spend just a few words on GBS as a company. Um, we are a German-based company. Our headquarters is in Europe. We have several offices in, in Germany and uh, we have other offices in the UK, in India and in North America. The GBS company exists since way more than two decades now and we have two areas of expertise. Um, the first is messaging and email and we have one product family um, about this area. And then the second area of expertise is collaboration and workflow. And um, this will be the focus of today's presentation. We are happy to work for and with 5,000 customers and that over 4 million users are using our products. And well, on this slide you can see just a small sample of uh, companies we have worked with and for. Okay, um, let's move on to the uh, real topic of this webinar. It's um, business process support in Microsoft SharePoint and Office 365. Um, let me start by naming a few of the challenges that we see uh, when we discuss it with our customers. Um, the first thing is that um, some of the business process systems are not flexible enough. So we are in the era of digitalization and more and more business processes are supported with, uh, with computer systems and, and workflows in SharePoint. And um, of course you have the very generic workflows like a simple document approval where you can buy solutions off the shelf. But then there's, um, there are sooner or later more complex and uh, very individual processes uh, that are only valid for exactly one scenario, exactly one organization, and then you need a system that's really flexible to uh, help you achieve your goals. The next challenge is that there's a lack of intuitive tools for your line of business departments. So that is because of two things. Um, first, um, your line of business departments um, have a demand for process support and they could really add solutions and add value themselves uh, in simple cases, but without intuitive tools um, they cannot achieve that. And the second reason is that sooner or later, even for the most complex scenario, you have to let your business users participate uh, and that is to write down the specifications and to specify the, the requirements of the system and how the process should be laid out. And 
again, you need intuitive tools to have this process uh, run in an effective manner. Then the, the th third challenge is um, platform independence or support for different platforms. And that is also for two reasons. The first is that um, we are seeing more and more mixed scenarios, mixed uh, system architectures uh, at customer sites. And the second one is um, if you ever want to change your strategic decision for one platform, um, then you need a system that helps you do this. So we as GBS um, started in the field of uh, IBM Notes and Domino and we have accompanied um, a lot of customers during the last um, decade that moved away from that system to the Microsoft technology stack and um, yeah, so the, the custom business processes that have been built on top of the Domino platform, this is the most problematic uh, field for them now to make the move. So um, now that um, you as SharePoint customers um, have the opportunity to, to um, well, make other um, decisions in the, in the future, you should really um, think about on which platform you should base your uh, strategic processes on. And the last challenge I want to discuss today is that um, you need systems that um, run on premise and that's what most other systems do but of course you have to think about cloud scenarios and, and uh, hybrid scenarios um, and also maybe you need this today or you might need this in five years so we have seen customers moving into the cloud, we have seen others moving out of the cloud and back onto on-premise installations again. So you should have a, you should have a system that, um, well, is able to help you in all cases. That's where the GBS app designer comes into play. Um, with app, we don't mean mobile apps, uh, we mean business applications. And um, app designer allows intuitive creation of workflows and forms that can be used in SharePoint and also standalone web applications and that all without programming knowledge. So um, you can have your line of business departments develop no code solutions but of course if you have um, if you have certain power users that know for example a little bit of JavaScript you can achieve uh, better results and if you include your IT departments and uh, IT professionals then um, well you don't have any limits. GBS App Designer can be integrated with SharePoint that's what we're talking about today um, and because of our history we have implemented the same system uh, based on, on, on Domino and connections and that's where you can use it as well. Then. App Designer is available with the same feature set on premise and in the cloud. And uh, well, you can also use it on mobile devices, um, well, in addition to using it in your browser. The good thing about uh, App Designer is that it consolidates uh, all the relevant aspects. So um, let's start on the left hand side. You have your processes, that's the core of the, of the App Designer approach and um, we are using the BPMN standard um, so you also have uh, well uh, well a lot of choices around this and um, next to the process capabilities we have our own forms engine that helps you create um, well state-of-the-art forms designed for SharePoint um, we have included intuitive design tools that help you implement those uh, those two things. Um, you can see at the top that, uh, of course, we have cloud integration, mobility aspects. And on the left-hand side, you, uh, sorry, on the right-hand side, you can see that um, thanks to our second product line um, that covers email and, and messaging capabilities, we have a really tight integration to your email infrastructure and we'll get back to this topic later in the presentation. 
App Designer offers several benefits for uh, several stakeholders. So um, let's start with the with the regular users. Um, they benefit from from uh, the convenient, intuitive handling. Um, they really benefit from a fast uh, rollout of solutions that they need in their daily work. Um, so they can continue working when they are away from the office with our mobile support. And uh, well, one other thing um, you can see it at the end of the list. Um, the, the individual employee can track his own processes. So, for example, the vacation request that uh, that was requested. So, where is that process right now? Then, for the IT department, there are there are other benefits. So, the IT departments um, benefit from from the open architecture, from from the standards that we are using, like BPMN for the workflows, and for Forms Engine, we are using. A standard called X forms. So uh, the good thing is you find you can find literature about that. You can find communities about that. You can hire staff that knows things about this. Um, there are trainings offered in the market, so uh, you really can um, well uh, benefit from our architecture that uses standards. And um, so you don't have lock in effect. And one other important benefit is the, the reduced workload. So by shifting implementation work to your regular users, um, you can reduce the workload of the IT department. And even if you work together uh, with the help of our tools, um, the, the line of business users can um, accomplish the first steps in that process, and this also reduces the IT department's workload. And the management is always happy about uh, investment protection. Um, you know that you get um, opportunities to, to uh, change your strategic decisions in the future. Um, they benefit from uh, processes in your company that are standardized, overall processes, a uh, feature that is valid in, in, and available in one process, is available in all processes. You do your training just once, for example, so you can reduce cost and then operating cost, training costs, and so forth. How can you achieve that? How can you implement um, your workflows and forms and applications? Um, this is, of course, really high-level uh, summary. So basically, you start with your forms. You design the forms you need. Um, as a second step, you model the, the process and in that step you can use all the forms and the form content that you have uh, completed in the last step. And at the end you can think about uh, well, how to define your navigation, what views you need to your data and so on. Here I will show you just a couple of screenshots, but there will be live demo later in the presentation so you can see it in, in action. Um, this is our forms designer. Um, it's a graphical tool um, that lets you put together your form uh, with, with drag and drop capabilities and um, um, well, of course you can enrich it with code if you, if you have programming knowledge and uh, well, otherwise you can still uh, build your forms um, that can bring value to your um, to your daily work. Here you see our workflow designer. Um, it's based on similar principles, so it's also um, a graphical tool um, that lets you drag and drop and outline your uh, your process um, and well lets you um, yeah build running solutions really fast. Then you, we have other design tools like uh, this one that lets you define which views you would like to see, um, but we will see that later in action. There's really an, an, an abundance of uh, examples what you can do with uh, this tool set. Um, I used this slide to just name a few. Um, I hope that, that every one of you can, um, yeah, well, can 
can uh, find one on the list that uh, well reminds you of a project you had to do in the past or something that you're up to in the future. One strategic aspect of App Designer is platform independence and um, things that you can use, you have the option to use is of course you can use browser to access everything, you can use uh, mobile devices, we have um, native mobile apps for iOS and Android and of course you can use your mobile device to just use the regular browser to do that. Uh, we support on-premise, cloud or hybrid approaches. Um, we integrate into SharePoint on-prem and uh, Office 365 and for some of our customers uh, uh, this is also relevant that we have the same platform based on Domino uh, and the IBM stack, so for example connections, but I don't think this is well very relevant to this audience. With uh, App Designer for SharePoint you can um, create your workflows and forms with the tools that I showed you before and integrate them into your site collections. What we are supporting is integration into lists and document libraries. Um, we have used the approach to implement it uh, as a provider hosted add-in. Um, so this is this is Microsoft's preferred approach to um, add capabilities to SharePoint that will really survive the next uh, the next major release of SharePoint. Again, some screenshots, but we'll see it later in action. Um, well, this is this is. Uh, well, a default list as you can see um, and your users can continue to work the, uh, well, the, the way um, they always used SharePoint and um, the only thing where you can see that App Designer has been integrated is that you have these four uh, orange colored buttons in the ribbon um, that help you decide which specific form or which specific workflow you want to use in this list or this document library. Well, if you have done that, then um, if you create new entries or you edit items, then you will see that um, instead of SharePoint's built-in um, forms engine, you will see App Designer's forms engine, uh, well, in action, and you can see at the top of this screenshot some uh, workflow related elements, for example, this uh, progress bar that will fill up over time uh, with every step of the process. Yes, uh, as mentioned before, we used the provider hosted add in approach, um, Microsoft's preferred way to do so, and um, as you can see by uh, the, the, the words provider hosted, it means that there is another server outside of SharePoint. Um, this is our core. Uh, App Designer server that you can install on premise or uh, from use it from the cloud, and um, the the core workflow logic runs on that server, and uh, that allows us to have, for example, interfaces to other systems, backend automation. Um, so there are no limits to what our workflows can do because we use this provider hosted server. Um, and then there's another, um, well, IIS server that can be hosted somewhere, uh, either on-prem or, again, uh, from the cloud, some Azure site or hosted by GBS, um, that only has the provider hosted add-in um, on it. And um, so it, it is used, well, in a way like just a proxy that connects the SharePoint server to the App Designer server. Yeah, then um, every business application or workflow that you have created um, can be added to your site collections. Yeah, to, to quickly repeat what, we, what we've learned, um, you don't need to do any sp specific SharePoint development, so you just use our design tools and the integration um, yeah, well, is done by the app designer and you can reduce your system discontinuities because now you have all your data and processes within the SharePoint uh, user interface and um, you can integrate email content 
uh, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll get to that point later. On this slide, you can see the responsive design um, once you use your tablet or smartphone to access um, the app designer backend and um, so this is for people that have connectivity and uh, always want to work with the latest data. In addition, we provide uh, mobile apps for iOS and Android. Well, what's so special about them is that um, they allow offline use, so they synchronize all the relevant processes and data onto the device. Then you can continue working while you are uh, well, on a plane, in a train, um, well, at some location where there's no connectivity, you can make your changes and work on your processes. And the next time you have connectivity again, you just synchronize back your changes and then, um, yeah, you're good to go. And, well, in addition, you can use the device's uh, um, advantages like the camera, um, so you can go out, take pictures of something that's related to your process and um, attach those pictures to the, to the process. And the last, um, the last topic on that slide is also important. So once you have created your forms and workflows, you don't need to have any additional work to get it uh, running on your, in the mobile app because also this is done uh, by the app design. So, uh, just have to design it once. Yes, now I would like to switch to a quick live demo. Okay, this is a, um, a small demos SharePoint 2013 that's running in Azure. So um, let's see how fast it is. Okay, um, I have prepared um, this GBS App Designer test site collection, and I have also prepared um, a list. In that list, I want to work with complaints, customer complaints, and I'm collecting them here and uh, yeah, working on them in a in a simple process that has several steps. And um, so, uh, what can I do to um, initiate a new complaint process? Um, I can use SharePoint's default features like um, the new item button or uh, the new item in the uh, in the ribbon. So now the app designer forms engine opens up. Yeah, what you can see here is at the top um, some workflow related Data. So you can see the progress bar. You can see that there are uh, three steps um, in this process. So someone from the back office has to file the complaint. Um, I can all well already tell you that there's another step. Um, that's an additional step um, that's required when we uh, well when we move um, uh, to a certain threshold of. Uh, of euros, that's 500 euros. Afterwards, then there will be another step required in this process. Afterwards, there, someone will authorize a compensation uh, or not, and then there's some um, some archiving work at the end. So you can see that this is the simple process. Um, the progress bar will uh, fill over time. If you want to see more details about the workflow, you can uh, expand this section where you can have additional details, uh, for example, well, priority, status, and so on. There can be um, a description and a, and a task instruction and all those things in this area. And you will also find a protocol that, um, well, tells you what has been done in this pro process so far and who, who did 
what, when, and what was the uh, decision that was taken, and so on. You also see the the, the buttons, uh, and there's one important button. Um, it can have a different name, but it will be always here at this spot, and it lets you complete your current task. So if you are the current editor of this uh, workflow task, then you need this button to uh, yeah, make sure that you have completed your task. Um, of course, there will be some checks in the background. Someone can define when a task can be completed, but so that's, that's the general idea. I, I sign off my task. Below, you can see um, one example form, um, and um, well, you see we have we have uh, used an image, and we have calculated values. Uh, we have some hints of how to fill this form. We have some additional uh, additional help, pop-up help. Um, you can see that there are uh, required fields and well, everything else you need from a decent forms engine. Here's, a, uh, here's an area that lets you write formatted text. So let's, let's fill out the example. So I take one, uh, one example customer that has a complaint. I will also um, select one article and say this is, this is a complaint regarding delivery note number this and the invoice number is also this. Date of entry is today. Complaint type is, uh, well, let's say, well, the wrong amount of uh, smartphones has been shipped and the estimated costs is like 1,200 euros. Well, remember, there's a threshold that determines that now I have to have an, an additional workflow step. And once I'm done, I file my complaint. So now the workflow is initiated, all the uh, required steps are, um, are used, and here I can find my new complaint and I can also um, take care of the next step because in, on this demo environment I'm, I'm the admin I can do everything uh, no of course every step has a has a different editor um, and has different well permissions and well only in this demo environment I'm allowed to uh, complete every step of the workflow Okay, so now because we have reached the threshold of 500 euros, there's another uh, workflow step required and that's field service. Someone from the field service has to visit the customer and, uh, well, investigate what's what happened there. Um, I can, for example, uh, attach photos here. And I hope what you what you also see is that this is a completely different form. It has another set of fields. Um, it works slightly differently. Um, I have all the uh, information that was entered in the last step uh, well conveniently placed at the bottom, um, so not much um, not much space is uh, well is used to have all those informations I need. And why is that? Uh, we imagine that, well, the, the field service will use, for example, an iPad that doesn't have that much space to have a complex layout of, of 40 or 50 fields. So uh, we chose this one, and you can see this is just one column, um, so it can be used on an, on an iPad very well or even on a, on a smartphone. And you can also see that our process uh, reached the second step. Now you can see that the progress bar changed a little bit. Now there are four steps and we reached the, the second one. And also I can, um, I can take a look at the details and for example the details um, and the protocol where you can see that my demo user 
completed it uh, two minutes ago and now there's the second step that's field service and it's currently in progress. Okay, that's the basic idea. So, um, how can I, how can I implement those forms and workflows? Um, GBS App Designer, um, well, is a provider hosted add-in, and you can open this add-in um, once it is added to your site. So you will see when I open the site contents that app designer is just one uh, one element of the site and I can also uh, open it from from here or I put a link into the navigation and um, then this uh, provider hosted add-in opens in full screen and um, provides a lot of options that are not available in the list and uh, one of the one of the capabilities are all the all the design tools, but you can also use this um, user interface to see um, the the documents and the data. And you can see this is the one uh, we created together. And you can you can uh, work from here um, the same way that you worked from the list. But now let's move to the design section. Of course, this, this has certain permissions uh, in the background, so not everyone can, can change the design. Um, there are designer roles and administrator roles. Um, so, as I'm also the designer, I can view which forms are available for my complaint management process. And the first form that we have used today was field service. No, sorry, back office. What you're seeing now is our forms designer opening up. Um, it's a purely browser solution, uh, browser-based solution, so you don't need to install local software. Everything works from the browser. It's a graphical tool. On the left-hand side, you see all the elements that you can put on your onto your form. And um, so let me just quickly add something so you can see how easy it is. So I just uh, drag and drop one new text field onto my form. And I say it's the ESPC demo field. So and um, well now I can I can move things around. Uh, so it's it's easy drag and drop, and um, I can also make more uh, specific um, well configurations for this field. Some are very easy, so that your line of business users can use them without problem, and then you can dig deeper, uh, you can add more code and, and more automation. Um, let's start with the easy things. So, for example, you can make a field required with some uh, easy decision. Um, you can add a, a help message, so this is the demo help message. And you can also decide, should this field be read-only, should it be visible at all, should the value be calculated, or should I at least offer an initial value that the user can change. And um, you usually need to specify what should happen when you use these. So, for example, let's calculate the value. And to do so, we have implemented a wizard that like Excel power users um, that, that create formulas in Excel um, should be fine to work with. So here again, this is a point and click interface where I say, um, for example, I want to work with my um, invoice number. If you remember, my invoice number was uh, I, N, and then a seven digit number. And now I want to replace something just for the sake of demoing. Um, so there was always IN for invoice number and I will change that to ESPC. So you can see that something happens. Um, and so 
the the top part is where the where the power user can work, and the bottom part is where you can see that we we generate JavaScript, and uh, someone with programming knowledge, IT professionals, can really um, write any any JavaScript here. For example, trigger web services and so on. Okay, so I will say this field is read only and we will calculate the value. We will take the invoice number but change the, the part IN to ESPC. I save this change and then you can see without further ado um, if you are in your complaints um, application in your complaints list and you create the next process, you will see that the changed form is already used. Okay, now it's, it's rendering the new form. It's used the first time. We have to give him a couple of seconds. Yeah, you can see the field is here. Um, we have the, the demo help message and once I enter an invoice number and look up, you can see that the, the calculation is already taking place. So, you've seen without writing any JavaScript, I can, I can change my form, enrich it, uh, we'll add new content to it, new fields to it, and it's, uh, if that's the setup, it's immediately usable. Of course, you can split it up between development environments, testing environments, production environments, but um, what the basic idea is you make a change in the design tools and you can instantly use it in SharePoint. Getting back to the design part, um, now I want to take a look at the processes. There's only one in this example, it's my complaint management workflow. And once I click on, on it, a uh, browser tab opens. Again, this is a purely browser-based solution, um, a graphical modeling tool to lay out your process. And um, you can see how the process that I used uh, was modeled. It, of course, it's an easy one, um, but now you can um, you can start changing things and again as, as we've seen with the forms once you change something here in the in the workflow model the next workflow can also can can instantly use the new version if you choose to do that so here it's drag and drop again um, it lets me easily lay out my uh, my workflow then uh, with the, on the left hand side you see um, elements that you can use and drag and drop onto the field, uh, onto the canvas uh, and on the right hand side you see once you select an element all the properties and um, here I just want to use an easy example, give them a name so it's the uh, ESPC task and then um, you see it, it showing up and um, that's e as easy as it gets. So um, you can have your line of business users, um, well, at least paint the workflow um, that they are planning to uh, to implement. Um, the good thing is the result isn't just the picture; um, the result is working code. And to show you this, I would like to change the first step of my workflow because then we can easily see. Um, how fast it is. So I will change the name to um, file the ESPC complaint. That's the first thing I'll do. The second thing is I will change that progress label because that's the first thing that uh, will be visible. And I want to change the, the button that lets me sign off my task. And now I will save this uh, changed workflow. Oh, of course, uh, now it 
uh, it recognized that I forgot something. Um, I have running workflows uh, in this uh, specific version, so I cannot just change that. Uh, I have to assign a new version number, and now I can save it. Every, every process instance will complete with that process version it was started with. Um, so if you change your process, uh, then the regular case is that only new instances will follow the new uh, follow the new model. So now it's preparing everything. I'm watching for the saving um, notification. Yeah, while it's saving, I can tell you that this is BPMN 2.0 and um, yeah, well, which means you can send your line of business users to to trainings. Um, they can they can learn how to use this standard to lay out processes, and then you can hand over this to your IT professionals that add, for example, interfaces to third-party systems, um, and and well, well, use use web services to automate things. Um, that's what you can do, but um, so the line of business department will hand over an already running solution that all, all uh, well, the, it, it just needs to be enriched and, and finalized. Okay, let's see. Once I uh, choose to create a new, um, create a new one, then the new model should also uh, already be used. First time the workflow is used, now it's it will be rendered. Okay, you can see uh, the progress display changed, the button label changed, so and we have the new field. So that's how easy it is to to um, well build solutions for your SharePoint lists and document libraries. Um, okay, one more thing that you have to learn: how do you um, associate a list? with a certain workflow. And I've created another list that's empty so far. So if I would click on new item here in this empty list, then just a regular um, SharePoint form would open up. And what I have to do only once uh, in the lifetime of that list is um, associate it to a certain workflow. Or if you are not interested in workflows, you just want to use the forms capabilities of App Designer, you can also directly associate the form. But I want to use the workflows. Now this is a one-time uh, association. Um, I can select from my list of applications. I have this one here. And now it, it fetches all workflows that are part of the application. Only one. I save it. The next thing I will have to do is um, tell um, tell SharePoint and the App Designer which co list columns belong to which form fields. Um, if you are um, well, if you are a wise man, wiser than me, um, you assign the same names because then it's it's happening automatically. Um, <laughs> I did well. I did. Didn't that uh, didn't do that? I used different names. Um, that's why I have to do it manually here. So you can see article number, customer number. They have the same name, so they have been mapped automatically. Uh, but here I need to do um, more manual work. But I have learned what needs to be done. So on the, on the left hand side you see SharePoint list columns, list fields, and on the right hand side you have a selection of your um, app designer form fields and now you have, just have to associate those that you would like to associate. Okay, the last one is mapped automatically. Good. So that's what you do once. 
in case there are no changes uh, to the forms or workflows. And no, that's it. So once you create a new item in this list, it will hopefully work. Yeah, so that's it. That's all you need needed to do. Create a form, create, it, create a workflow and then uh, associate it to this list. Okay, I'm, I'm running out of time. That's why I would like to go back to my slides. And I want to uh, cover one more, one more topic and that's interplay with email. Um, that's where the second product line of GBS comes into play. It's called GBS IQ Suite, and it, uh, this is a, um, it's an email management solution. Um, so what's the problem? This was a project that we, we did for one customer. Um, well, they have created processes in SharePoint, and they created, um, well, dedicated email addresses. So all complaints, for example, should go to complaints at acme.com. Um, the problem was customers didn't apply to that rule, so they didn't send their complaints only to that complaint email address. No, they sent it to their sales representative, to the support person they know, and um, so the, the, the process was flawed. Um, um, yeah, that's why we integrated our two offerings. Um, the IQ suite is a, is a um, holistic email management suite. It's centralized, uh, rule-based. It runs on either Microsoft Exchange or uh, generic SMTP or uh, also for, for Domino for our other uh, kind of customers. Um, it really has a lot of capabilities, but I won't go into details here. Uh, I just leave the slide in the slide deck, and if you're interested, you can, you can read through uh, some of the capabilities, uh, but um, let's more focus on what we did together with, with App Designer workflows. So the first thing we did was we checked uh, every single email that uh, was inbound um, and we checked whether it, whether it will be a complaint or not. We checked email subject, email content, attachments, so attachment names, attachment content, if there's the word complaint or complaining or something like that, um, and identified emails um, regarding complaints. The next thing was these emails have been, um, well, evaluated further and we looked for customer IDs. Because they have a fixed format, um, we could try to find customer IDs. Um, if the ID was found, then um, it was extracted and together with all the email data, it was forwarded to, the, to a list um, and a, an app designer process was started. Um, but the good thing was the data was already in the process. Nobody had to fill it in manually. So the, the customer ID was visible in the, in the list. Uh, it was entered into one field. Uh, we had all the from, so who sent the mail, who was the addressee, who was the, what was the mail content, what were the mail attachments, and uh, it, all these data was put into the, into the process. And then there was a similar, a similar uh, handling of the complaint than the one I showed you before. Um, so someone in the back office started and maybe some, some field staff had to visit the client. Um, there was an approval step and yeah, and all integrated with automated notification. So uh, some notification to the original sender of the complaint. So uh, we have entered your complaint to our system. Um, now your complaint has been decided upon and these kind of notifications and of course, notifying uh, of the next process editors. Um, okay, so just so much for the for the use case with a tight email integration. Um, to to wrap up, what are the benefits of App Designer? Um, well, it it offers uh, forms and process integration into SharePoint and uh, SharePoint Online Office 365. Um, it's mobile enterprise ready. Um, well, it's also offered as a cloud, uh, with a cloud option. Um, GBS as a company 
is uh, well always um, well keen on, on platform independence so which means if there's ever a chance that you um, might want to embrace other systems uh, or additional systems then you have a platform independent system um, uh, that can be integrated as well um, you can reduce your costs uh, the return on investment is, is quick and you can you can integrate your custom business processes not just the, the default uh, processes that we all know and you can really roll out solutions fast uh, which means uh, line of business departments can can implement their own solutions or um, otherwise you can you, well it's really easy to roll out new workflows new forms new applications to your SharePoint environment okay what uh, so so much for my presentation what would be next steps um, of course GBS uh, will is at the, the European SharePoint conference uh, that's taking place in November in Vienna so please uh, visit the GBS booth and um, yeah, I'll learn more about App Designer and maybe our IQ Suite email offering. Our booth number is 15B. Um, there's a new um, website, so the the English website should be the new one should be launched today. Um, so please please visit the website and um, yeah, if you would like to arrange some follow-up discussions with me or my colleagues. I want to ask questions after the webinar then this is my email address and yeah please do not hesitate I'm always glad um, to discuss your needs thank you very much thank you Bjorn that was really really good um, I have a few questions here for you so I don't know if you're going to take them or one of your colleagues but um, I'll start calling them out and whoever needs to jump in can jump in okay Okay, brilliant. So, first question: uh, Is it possible to have a trial version so we can review it? Yes, of course. Um, App Designer has a um, well has a well some well App, sorry App Designer is a cloud offering, um, and we can give you on a trial account, and then we can give you the um, the, the code. Uh, we mostly use um, Office three sixty five for demo purposes. And we can arrange that, sure. Just oh. um, well, contact me. Okay, great. Uh, next question. Uh, we do not have SharePoint so far, but we are planning to configure directly and install SharePoint 2016. Are there any special requirements for the app designer to run on our 2016 on-premises environment? Um, well, as always, there's a certain list of, of technical requirements, um, but um, we, we could discuss those. Um, so nothing too special. Uh, of course, uh, certain requirements need to be met um, and um, support for SharePoint 2016 um, will be ready um, uh, in the first quarter of 2017. And um, yeah we can work together, um, work out those requirements. But okay. you, more or less you need the basic, uh, you need a basic SharePoint 2016 environment. Um, you need the, the add-in catalog uh, configured, for example, the workflow manager needs to be running. So uh, th these are the kind of things I'm talking about. Okay, great. Uh, we have a next question. We have a small SharePoint farm with only two servers, SharePoint and separate SQL server. Do we need a third one to install the app designer or can we deploy it on the SharePoint server as well? Um, you can deploy the, the provider hosted add-in on this uh, SharePoint server as well, and but you will always need the uh, core app designer server. Um, but if you do not plan to do so, we could uh, offer you the, the cloud uh, offering of GBS. So, for okay. example, where we host it in, in Microsoft Azure or some other German uh, well, center, data center. Okay. What happens to saved forms after changing the form design? We specifically decided that we want to um, always use the latest version of the forms for all documents because when there is a change um, let's say the well some some 
and even if it's just a company logo that changes or you need additional options in a, in a selection field, um, we decided that we always wanted to use the latest version of a field, uh, sorry, of a form. Um, if you don't like that, you can make a copy of the form and then well, uh, use one, the old form, only for the old workflow version and then, uh, then the copied uh, version for new workflows, for example. So, but uh, in, in general, workflows um, have a strict version management um, and it's, it's made sure that every instance uh, will complete with a specific version it was used to start with. But forms is a different thing. We decided that it's better uh, for the customers to always use the latest version of a form. Okay. And the last question, uh, which workflow engine are you using? Is it custom or SP workflow? Um, it is our own uh, workflow engine that has been built in the last 20 years or so. Um, we are using a small part of the SharePoint workflows um, so that you can see uh, a list of your current tasks, for example. But this is just a, a tiny fraction of the SharePoint workflow engine. We're using it so you can go to the My site and, and see what you have to do. Uh, the core logic, 99% of the workflow engine, that is our app designer uh, workflow engine in the back end. Great. Bjorn, thank you so much for your time today. I will be seeing you in Vienna in a couple of weeks. Uh, yep. You'll definitely be popping over to your booth and saying hello. Um, and I've left your contact details there on the screen, so if anybody needs to contact you, they can email you directly. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I'm glad. To help. That's brilliant. Excellent. Bjorn, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, I thank you and all the attendees um, for your time and yeah, I hope to get to know you better and, and meet you in person. Great, great. Thanks Bjorn. Okay everybody, that's it for today's webinar. Um, just going to wrap up here. And uh, yeah, so for more top quality training from the world's best speakers, look no further than Vienna for the European SharePoint Conference. See SharePointEurope.com for full details. Uh, I'm just going to change the presenter to me. And just bear with me here for one sec. Okay, great. So that's it for now. Uh, join us again for our next webinar on Thursday, October 27th for end-to-end -end digital transformations. Thank you and goodbye.